Welcome to virtual worship with the Congregational Church of Brookfield. And know that no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. We are delighted that you are worshiping with us today. In this time when it seems that both so much has changed and yet so much remains the same, we realize that the one truly unchanging thing is our God, who we believe is ever present and even still speaks into our world to help lead us in the right direction. As Pastor Bryn said this past Sunday, it's at times like these that we most need worship, to go back to basics, studying our scriptures, singing and praying together. And we do that even as a church apart at this time, as we gather in spirit and virtually across time and distance. We need more than ever to live into our historic call to be the church of Jesus Christ, to bear witness to the power of healing love by coming together as the body of Christ, joining in the wonder and work of justice and peacemaking, following our example and guide. So as we gather our spirits together today, we will consider how God is still speaking to us, as well as the different ways we communicate with God and share about our faith with others. We give thanks today for Serena Quinsland, our scripture reader, and Wendy Elson, who not only will share about the ways that God has spoken into her life and the connections made through her faith and our call to share, but also offers the message in our special kids worship today as well. We're also grateful for Tony Sullivan, our music director, who has composed a new piano response for this week's worship and mastered a new virtual anthem, God is Here Today with the generous talent shared by members of our Alleluia and Chancel Choirs. If you would like the YouTube links for either of our recorded worship services each week, our more traditional virtual worship or our kids worship, or if you want to connect to our church school program, which meets on live Zoom most Sunday mornings at 9.30 a.m., or other educational or fellowship groups for youth and adults that are meeting on Zoom, you can email our church office at office at uccb.org for more information. And now, may the Holy Spirit center our hearts in a spirit of prayer and draw us together as we begin our worship. Let us enter into our time of worship, centering our hearts and hearing these words that are based on Psalm 130. We lift our voices to God, believing that God hears us. We bring our confessions, humbled and blessed by God's forgiveness and amazing grace. We lift our prayers to God, our whole lives a prayer confident that God is watching, listening, and guiding us. We wait in hope, knowing that God's steadfast love lifts our hearts. We celebrate God's presence, knowing that with God's arrival into our lives and hearts comes deep love, generous redemption, and God's awesome strength. And now may the Holy Spirit's power restore us and the whole world around us to fullness of life and even joy. Let us gather and worship together today, trusting that God is still speaking. Now, friends, will you join your hearts and your souls in the spirit of prayer with me? Holy One, the world around us declares your wonders, the sun by day, the moon by night, the beauty of your creation. And yet we have managed to take your creation, your world, animals, other people for granted, or have used them for our purposes and not yours. None of us knows quite the extent of our faults, the way our actions can cause pain or our words can hurt others to the core. Forgive us when we sin and set us on your right path once again, helping us to follow your teachings and granting us wisdom for new life in you. 
instructions that make our hearts and your great heart of love glad. In this time of worship, restore us in the bright light of your love and guide us through your word and the power of your spirit to be restorers and healers of the brokenness in our world in whatever ways possible. We give thanks that you are our rock and our redeemer. Let our words and thoughts be pleasing to you, O Lord, during this time and in the days ahead. We pray this in the name of the one who showed us through his words and actions a still better way, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Will you pray with me? Holy God, word made flesh, let us come to the reading of your word open to being surprised. Silence our agendas, banish, banish our assumptions, cast out our casual detachment, challenge our expectations, clear the cobwebs from our ears, penetrate the corners of our hearts with this word. We know that you can, and we pray that you will grant us the courage to follow you through the power and call of these words shared today. Amen. Today's scripture reading comes from the Apostle Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians, chapter 4, verses 9 through 12, and chapter 5, verses 13b through 24. We don't have to write you about the need to love each other. God has taught you to do this, and you have already shown your love for all of his people in Macedonia. But, my dear friends, we ask you to do even more. Try your best to live quietly, to mind your own business, and to work hard, just as you were taught to do. Then you will be respected by people who are not followers of the Lord, and you won't have to depend on anyone. Try to get along with each other. My friends, we beg you to warn anyone who isn't living right, encourage anyone who feels left out, help all who are weak, 
and be patient with everyone. Don't be hateful to people just because they are hateful to you. Rather, be good to each other and to everyone else. Always be joyful and never stop praying. Whatever happens, keep thanking God because of Jesus Christ. This is what God wants you to do. Don't turn away God's spirit or ignore prophecies. Put everything to the test. Accept what is good and don't have anything to do with evil. I pray that God, who gives peace, will make you completely holy. And may your spirit, soul, and body be kept healthy and faultless until our Lord Jesus Christ returns. The one who chose you can be trusted, and he will do this. May God add a blessing to our understanding of these words. Amen. Friends, will you pray with me for a moment? Holy One, help us to be still and to know that you are God and that you are here present among us, still speaking into our lives. Settle in us all that is unsettled, if even just for these moments, so that we might open ourselves up wholly and truly to the words that you have for each of our lives today. Amen. I sat in awe. All political leanings aside, you had to be amazed. There they stood, two people of vastly different ages from vastly different backgrounds, both of whom continue to work persistently to overcome serious speech impediments, up on display on the world stage. President Joe Biden, who still works to overcome the challenges of a stutter he's had since he was a young boy, and Amanda Gorman, our nation's first youth poet laureate, who up until a year ago, and even at times today, still has difficulty pronouncing words, especially those with R's in them, speaking to millions from their hearts with the power of their convictions, passions, and vision behind them. I share this because I've been thinking a lot about communication this week, about the ways we communicate. I began college as an interpersonal and mass communications major and ended with a degree in sociology and a minor in justice and society studies. So the ways that people communicate messages and how those messages are heard, depending on who you are, what your background is, and what's going on in the world has been a bit fascinating to me for a long while now. And as we walk further into our stewardship season, focusing on how God speaks to us and how we respond, as we have a group that's working together through crucial conversations training, and as I engaged with the scripture from Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians, there's this way in which I have been more attuned to this aspect of our humanity a bit more fully and wholly over this week. Did you know that studies show that only 7% of what we communicate to one another and the world is in the words we actually speak? When we're speaking to others, about 38% of what we communicate then is shared in the tone with which we say things, and the other 55% is in our nonverbals, our body language, the ways we smile or roll our eyes, the ways we cross our arms or lean in to what we're saying or what's being said. We have all these ways we communicate through our verbal and nonverbal expression, through visuals, how we look and what we post, through written language and the words we choose to grace the page before us. So why would we expect then that our prayer, one of the foundational practices of our faith, the way that we communicate with God would come in only one form, in flowery language on our knees or seated with our hands neatly folded in front of us, that this way would be the one way that we could share our deepest needs and blessings, our concerns and joys with God, and we'd be the one way we would hear from God in return. Now, while dedicated prayer time is important, giving us time out from the demands of this world, offering opportunities for discernment and transformation, I think communication with God and others happens way more often and in many different forms than we think or realize including without words. 
And I think our clues for this come from the two scriptures we've heard today from Psalm 130 used in today's call to worship and in this passage just shared from the letter to the Thessalonians. Now, Paul's first letter to the new church in Thessaloniki is the earliest of his letters and the earliest dated of the New Testament writings. In it, Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, who were working as missionaries along with him, write to the young church in Thessaloniki. They write that the people in this community have no need to wait for Christ's coming again, to live like they have been given new life. They, as we, were sharing in the new life of Christ at that very moment as they read this letter. And so it was important for them to pursue the work of their lives and their lives in community in a way that was authentic and faithful, pleasing and obedient to God. Paul expressed that the Christian way of life was expected to make an impression on those outside the faith, as well as to bolster and encourage those within. And he shared that love was the hallmark of Christian existence. So it is no surprise then that when we enter into this section of the letter that was shared today, it is as if Paul is speaking as much to us as to that ancient community in Greece, sharing some pretty straightforward instructions for how to behave and to communicate with one another about what is right and wrong, how to encourage others, how to share with God, and how to gain the respect of those who would have nothing to do with Christians otherwise. He writes about continual communication with God and others through word and deed. Paul exhorts those reading to live quietly and work hard, to mind their own business unless there is someone who is not living right, someone needs encouragement or hate needs to be countered by goodness. He says that it's important to be joyful with a joy, the fruit of the spirit that can accompany people through even the toughest times to pray always, and to thank God because of the new life and example received in Jesus Christ. And Paul instructs not to take everything heard as gospel truth, but to put everything to the test, accepting what is good and imbued with the spirit and putting off anything that is evil. Paul tells people to communicate their faith and the way they live and the work they do through actions and not words. He tells people to communicate through words of correction and encouragement, words that can help bring about a community centered on goodness and living in peace. He tells people to communicate through the joy others can see and through prayers lifted constantly in word and deed. He tells people to communicate through listening and testing, through research toward the truth, through acceptance of what is good in God's eyes and of calling out what is evil, that which is intended to hurt, to break down, to divide. So this is one of those moments when I read the scriptures and I don't just see a letter to an ancient Greek church thousands of years ago. I see directions that are just as plain and clear and important for us now as they were then. The reality is that once we claim our place in the family of God's faithful and make that known, there are eyes and ears on us. Our task is to communicate well and faithfully through our word and deed what it is that we believe and the path we have been taught to follow through the example and guidance of Jesus Christ. Then, writes Paul, you will be respected by people who are not followers of the Lord. Then our lives will speak in ways that are more powerful at times than our words. And in order to do so, we need to be in continual communication with God through prayer, through the nudging of the spirit, through the call that comes to us in the words of a 22 year old inaugural poet or through the veteran we meet out in the world or through the written word of someone whose lived experience has been far different than our own. We need to test the things we hear and see in order to discern if they are of God. And if so, we need to put them on and carry them with us. In one translation of Psalm 130, the psalmist says, I pray to God, my life a prayer, and wait for what God will do and say. My life's on the line before God, my Lord, waiting and watching till morning. Friends, 
As we head into this week, may we consider more deliberately and deeply how we communicate with others, especially during this time of heightened tension and division. May we have the courage to clear up the disagreements that happen quickly and with respect. May we have the grit to work through the tough places and blind spots. May we be attuned to all the ways that we are communicating with God and the ways that God is speaking in return. And may we realize and live as if our life truly is a prayer, one of healing and blessing, of hope and joy, of goodness and justice and peace. Amen. As we enter into our time of prayer today, we want to remind you that we're not doing this service live. So these people have let us know their prayer requests in advance. We would invite you to email us at office at uccb.org if you have joys or concerns you want us to share next week. We're praying today for some who are grieving, for Tony's friend Barb who lost a dear friend to COVID last week, and for Judy, who lost her good friend Agnes this past week at age 100. We're praying for the Marin and Acosta families as they grieve the loss of beloved family pets this past week. We're also praying for Judith, Tom's sister, who is struggling with her own health and with the continued grief over losing her husband to COVID toward the end of last year. We're praying for a swift recovery for Olivia after her successful surgery this past week. We're glad to say she is home from the hospital and recovering well. We continue to pray for Beth and her recovery from eye surgery, especially as she and her family continue to grieve the death of her mother, Barbara. We continue to pray for both Carol and her son, Darren, as they recover from their recent heart procedures. We pray for all of you who may be anxiously awaiting test results or preparing for surgeries. We're praying especially for Janine and Bruce who are still undergoing testing. We pray for all who are sick with COVID, for Jim's son, Jim, and his wife, Trish, and for Ken, who is in quarantine after his workplace was exposed. We pray for all who are ill or recovering, especially for Christy and Pete's 
Denise Claire. We lift up prayers for all who are struggling with mental health issues during and perhaps compounded by these difficult times, especially for Mark and Sophia. We pray for all our caregivers and their loved ones, for Bill and Mary Lou, for Tina and her mother Mary, for Nancy and George, Susan and her mother Marion, Bob and his sister Janet, Linda and Ed, for Valerie and Herb, for Marie and Larry, for Kristen and her mother Molly and in-laws Stella and Tony, for Christiana and Keith and Dan, for Marion, for Shonda, for Karen and her father John, for Nancy and Larry and Kathy and Bruce, and for Roy and his sister Carol, who continues in hospice care. We pray for those who are undergoing cancer treatment, for Ray, whose father is also in hospice care as he seeks cancer treatment, for Lou's sister Kate, for Susan and her caregiver Peter, especially as her tests show that surgery will be more extensive than expected, for Carla and Rocky, Brian, Manuel, Gavin, Haley, and John. We pray for any among you who are struggling financially or looking for jobs. We're praying especially for Patrick awaiting news after a recent job interview. And we give thanks for um, peace in our land as we were able to celebrate an inauguration without any further violence. With Pastor Jen and her family, we give thanks that her nephew James, who had been deployed to D.C. with the National Guard, that he was able to return safely to Connecticut with others in his unit. We're praying for them along with many others um, that they will also come through their COVID quarantine safely without any further spread of the virus. We're praying a prayer of thanksgiving today for the two UCC seminarians, Debbie and Haley, that we prayed for last week as they're now both fully recovered from COVID and back at their studies. And we're rejoicing that other young people from our church are now also recovered for Kirk and Jill, Chris and Katie. We're rejoicing with Janine that her daughter Jen is recovering very well now from her cancer surgery. We have a prayer of thanksgiving, especially during this stewardship season for our generous donors, as well as for the creative work of our committee and um, to Amy, Jack, Christy, Greg, and Sue for their work in managing us into a good budget position for the new year. We're also grateful for the really important plan work being done by our Long Range Planning Committee and Fellowship Hall Improvement Group and our Church House Committee, as well as the ongoing repair work being done every single Tuesday by Morrison's gang. We also um, would offer a prayer of joy and gratitude for our wonderful church music program, for Tony's gifts in arranging the music for today, and especially for directing our combined children's and adult choirs in a lovely adult anthem. So now will you join me for a word of prayer? Good and gracious God, we thank you for being our almighty creator, the source of all life, father and mother to your beloved peoples from around the world. Thank you for the precious gift of your son, Jesus, for the way you come to us in him and share our common lot, conquering sin and death and reconciling the world to yourself. We thank you for your promise to be with us always through the power of your Holy Spirit. We thank you for being the source of all our hope near to us as breath, Thank you for offering us both your listening ear and your still speaking voice. Tune our hearts to sing your praise and guide our minds to listen closely to your wisdom. May it be your voice that guides and inspires us. Help us to know good from evil, to discern truth from lies, and to walk in the way you would have us go, both in our own personal lives, but also in our church, in our community, and in our nation. May the words that we speak as well as our tone and posture reflect the love you would have us share with our neighbors and help us to foster peace and reconciliation wherever we go. 
Lord, on this day, we know there are many who are grieving. Surround them with your strong arms of love and mercy. As our world passes the two million death mark, and our country the 400,000 mark in deaths just from COVID, make us mindful of the families represented by those numbers, some within our own church. Give us the grace and wisdom we need to listen to scientific guidance and prevent the spread of this deadly virus. Watch over all our first responders, researchers, and medical personnel, all who put their lives on the line for us every single day. And we thank you for keeping our capital city safe from much feared violence at this last week's inauguration. We pray for your protection over our new president and vice president and all our elected leaders. Protect our troops and all who honor their uniforms in public service. We pray for the people of Portland as violence rises up anew there. May we all, our whole nation and world, learn to share our differing political perspectives with more civility and peace and work together to forge new alliances of trust and find creative new solutions for the good of all. Remind us, O oh Lord, to come to you, not just in church, but all day, every day, in constant communication, with heartfelt prayers, sharing with you honestly our doubts, our struggles, our fears. As so many among us are going back to work in person, we pray for your protection for all our essential workers. We pray for safety also for our students and parents and teachers, as well as for coaches and school administrators as we move forward into a new spring semester, some with in-person learning. In the midst of our many worries, Lord, remind us always to be thankful, to bring to you not just our failures and our losses, but also our joys and celebrations. We give you thanks for new babies and grandbabies, for puppies and blue skies and other signs of light and new life around us, including those happy with their new jobs or feeling safer after getting COVID vaccinations. May our days be filled with thanksgiving and may our lives be open before you as an all day, all night prayer. Unite us in our love for you and in our commitment to walk together in the way of our Savior Jesus, in whose name we pray this and all our prayers. Amen. Hi, I'm speaking to you from the youth room. This room has been a very active part of my ministry here with Sunday school, confirmation, youth group meetings, and women's fellowship. Um, and I'm very thankful to this church for having me grow up in the traditions of faith that um, helped me grow and started me on a journey of faith. When I was a young mom living in Louisiana, I remember one Christmas that I was reading a story to my children, The Friendly Beast, about the animals with Jesus at the manger. And there was a prompting in me that I needed more. I needed my family to be raised in a church, that we needed to know more about Jesus and the story and the way that he lived his life. So that prompted led me to find a church, a small Methodist church. And my family grew up in that church. I was involved in Sunday school and all these programs. And it was through, um, we did a lot of Bible studies and book studies and women's groups. And there was one study we did that was on the book about Mary and Martha. And it's a study about two sisters that love Jesus and they experience that love in different ways. One is very task oriented, getting done everything that needs to get done, whereas the other sister actually takes time to listen to Jesus, to be at his feet and hear his words, speak to her and connect with Jesus in a more relational way. And it was through that study that I realized I needed more of a connection to God I needed to find ways to hear God speaking to me, not just do the good tasks for Jesus and for the ministries of church, but to feel a connection. And there was one woman that was part of that study. And when she shared her stories of 
her life and what she had done through hospital ministries and things, you saw God shining. I hung on every word that she shared. And I literally said, I want what she has. So that led me on a journey of developing a deeper faith to get to know God, to get to know Jesus and the Holy Spirit in a true personal way. So I, I did, I continued in Bible studies in small groups and joining Women's Fellowship where we can all share and connect. And I, I hear God speaking through those other people, helping nourish me and helping me understand what God has planned for me. And I moved back to Connecticut and what did I find? An active women's group that I was able to join. And I'll have to say, I was truly overjoyed because meeting with those ladies was like a life rope for me. They, they helped my spirit, they encouraged me, they gave me hope, and they helped me understand directions for my life. They were God speaking directly to my spirit, words that I needed to hear. Um, so having that relationship has made me more energized and more wanting to give love to the world, to our church, to my family, to the community. It has inspired me to want to pass it on, like it says in that song. Once you've experienced God's love, you want to pass it on. So today, on behalf of Stewardship, I'm asking you, when God has spoken to you, in what ways have you been able to move forward to share that love? Maybe with family, with friends, with the community. God does speak to us in personal ways, ways of hope, giving us direction, giving us guidance and purpose. There's ways that you can share this love by supporting our church. You can give to it financially. You can give to the ministries of this church by becoming involved. You can join our Bible studies and our, our small groups to help grow on your faith journey. And as you find that love and that feeling of connection to the Spirit, it will make you want to do more, more of what God and what Jesus have taught us to do. So today I pray that you are hearing God speaking in your lives and that you are finding words of encouragement and hope and direction. And I pray that in that moving forward, you will find ways of giving too. Thank you.
As we prepare to take our leave from one another today and go forth into this week, I remind you of these words from Paul's letter to the Thessalonians. Encourage others with patience. Be good to everyone. Be joyful. Pray constantly. Thank God. Accept what is good, having nothing to do with evil. And may our God, who gives peace, who has the power to make everything holy and whole, make you holy and whole, put you together spirit, soul, and body. Our God, who calls upon you, who still speaks into your lives and hearts calling you to work for and share peace, is faithful and can do this. May you be blessed and be a blessing, friends. And may God watch between us until we meet again. Amen. Thank you.